Top goal for U.S. marketers, it's acquiring new customers. This is a study, I believe, by, yeah, it was a study by Marketing Profs, but I found some other studies that said the exact same thing. So keep this in mind, and let me walk you through an example of one of my favorite rock stars, Amanda Palmer. Now, when I say she's one of my favorite rock stars, I've heard one song she's ever done, but I'm a big fan of her because of how she markets herself and how she connects with her fans. And especially, Amanda does an amazing job of connecting with her fans via social media and especially Twitter. And a few months ago, I think it was a Friday night, I was on Twitter and I started seeing some tweets from some of the people I'm following in Boston. One tweet, two tweets, five tweets, ten, a couple of dozens. They were all just gushing about this amazing performance they'd seen from Amanda that night in Boston. And there were so many of these, I was thinking there's something going on here. This is just too much gushing for a simple concert. So I checked into it and I saw Amanda's tweet here where she talks about having a secret show that night in Boston. And the marketing geek in me, when I saw the phrase secret show, that got me excited. So I had to see what was going on here. I checked into this and what Amanda had done is she had a profile set up on Get Glue. And I know a lot of you are probably familiar with Get Glue. It's a sort of a music slash entertainment focused social networking site. And she had a profile there. And if you wanted to be eligible to win tickets, to this show, what you need to do is you need to go to Amanda's profile on Get Glue, leave a comment sharing your favorite experience from seeing Amanda perform live. That's it. What I thought was really interesting about this particular approach is she structured this so that one, if you think about it, if you're going to win these tickets, you've had to, you have to have seen her perform live before. So if you're a new customer, if you've never been to an Amanda Palmer performance, no chance of winning. The second thing is, it's based on you sharing your experiences from seeing her perform and that would, that would indicate that if you've seen her perform longer, if you've been a fan of hers for like a decade, you'll have richer experiences to share, which means that you'll have a greater chance of winning the tickets. So you've got those two things working there. One, if you're a new customer, you're not going to win these tickets. If you're her biggest fan, you're probably going to have a better chance of winning. But the interesting thing about that approach is that if you're her biggest fan, wouldn't you be most likely to want to buy these tickets? You don't, she doesn't have to sell you on coming to see her perform. You're going to want to do that anyway. So if you go back to this mentality of having the top goal being that you want to simply acquire new customers, you think Amanda's an idiot because she's purposely excluded new customers. But the great thing about Amanda's approach is she's smart enough to understand that if she patterns this so that her biggest fans are going to be the ones that come to this show, what are they going to do? They're going to have an amazing time and then as soon as the show is over, they're going to go to Twitter, Facebook, plus they're going to get on their smartphones, they're going to text their friends, tell everyone how amazing the show was, how amazing Amanda is, so the next time Amanda comes back to Boston and has a paying show, these same people are going to come back, they're going to buy tickets, but guess who they're going to bring with them? Their friends. So she's going to get the new customers. She's going to acquire the new customers, but it's not going to be via her efforts, it's going to be via the efforts of her biggest fans. Because what Amanda has done here is, She's created something amazing for the people that loves her and she's smart enough to understand that by connecting with her biggest fans, those fans are then going to bring her new customers. Now let's go back to this. Top goal for U.S. marketers is acquiring new customers. Here's the interesting caveat to that. It costs six to seven times more to acquire one new customer versus retaining an existing customer. And this is another figure where I found several studies that said the same thing. There were a couple of studies that had that figure as high as eight times as much. So you've got companies, most of them are focused on acquiring new customers, but they're paying six to seven times as much to do so. <laughs> now I have to apologize for these next two slides because I have no computer graphical skills, <laughs> but I can freehand draw a little bit. So I wanted to, this, I wanted to make sure I got this graph up here so you guys can see it because it kind of backs up what I'm trying to talk about. You've got the x-axis here, you've got size of market, y-axis brand loyalty. Now notice on the left you've got new customers. That group is by far the largest. 
Next to it, you've got your existing customers, probably about half the size if that. Then next to that, you've got your comp customers with some brand affinity, size falls off again. And then at the very far right, you've got your brand advocates, very tiny sliver. But notice as the size of the market is falling dramatically, the level of brand loyalty is also increasing. So you've got the new customers here that's by far the largest group, but notice that they also have little to no brand loyalty. And notice that the brand loyalty goes up a little bit till you've got the end there, you've got your brand advocates, very tiny sliver, but at the same time, they've got the highest levels of brand loyalty. Now, this might be the most important slide of, the converse, or of this pr entire presentation right here because note the difference between where the companies focus and where the rock stars focus. They're at opposite ends of the spectrum. Companies are focused on new customers, the group that's by far the biggest, but they have little to no brand loyalty, where the rock stars are focused on brand advocates. And when we talk about brand advocates, brand evangelists, et cetera, that's just fancy business terms for fans. So rock stars are focused on their fans, and why is this so important? Because fans, evangelists spend 13% more than the average customer, and they refer business equal to 45%, almost half of what they spend. This is why rock stars like Amanda are focusing on bringing in their biggest fans, because again, they understand that those fans are then going to refer business, and those referrals are another word for new customers, which is what the companies are trying to get anyway. Now, here's the different focuses, again. Companies, they're focused on acquiring new customers. They're spending six to seven times as much to do so. Whereas rock stars, they're focused on connecting with their biggest fans. This is the group that spends 13% more than the average customer. And on top of that, they're referring business equal to 45% of what they spend. The beauty of the rock stars approach, in my opinion, is that they are getting everything that the companies are wanting in that they're getting new customers but they're not having to pay. Because the problem with the company's approach is they're trying to acquire a group that isn't really interested in connecting with them. So they're trying to get the attention of people that don't really want to pay attention to them. That's why they're spending so much money because this group, new customers, has little to no brand loyalty toward them. So they may spend the money to get five new customers, but while they're doing that, they may lose three to four of them. There's a high churn rate here. So that's why they're having to spend so much money. But the rock stars approach is they're getting the exact same end benefit, but they're not having to pay for it because they're getting the new customers via the efforts of connecting with the people that already love them. So think about it for a second. How much different would marketing in general look if most companies adopted this mindset of the rock stars, if they tried to get the new customers and acquire and expand their customer base via connecting with their biggest brand advocates, brand evangelists, whatever you want to call them. And let that be how they drove new customer and customer growth. So back to this question of why do rock stars have fans and companies have customers? It's simply because that's who both groups want. Companies want more customers, so they try to acquire new customers. Rock stars want more fans, so they're connecting with their biggest fans with the understanding that doing so is going to lead them to getting more new customers. 